What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael here with a ridiculously fun Fallout 4 build that uses absolutely no weapons. Yes, you heard that right, this build uses nothing but his bare fists, no power fists, no boxing gloves, just plain old flesh and bones to smash the life out of his opponents. If you've already seen this build by following us on Snapchat, or if you've just read the title of the video, you'll know this build is called The Brawler. He will be hard to play at first, but after you reach a certain point in the game, he will become incredibly hard to defeat. At the start of the game, things will of course be tough for the brawler, but he's a very strong dude so he can still dish out some pain. That said, this build will play as a more peaceful monk-like character, but of course he can unleash great power if he has to. Another great thing about this build is that your inventory will always be clean, and that means you can basically sell everything. This build uses a lot of VAT and critical hits, and definitely has a hit and run playstyle. He uses all the ranks of the Blitz perk, so you're definitely going to want to target enemies in VATs from as far away as possible to cause heaps of damage. This build also doesn't use lockpicking or hacking, and we recommend playing him on normal difficulty. We find this ensures the most fun balance between a challenge and kicking ass, as opposed to survival difficulty, which makes a playthrough with this build a struggle all the time. This build also doesn't use power armor, but if you want to, you definitely can at the start of the game, if you're stuck on a certain quest or location. This build will also most likely need to wear normal armor at the start of the game, but after you get the Ballistic Weave mod, you're going to want to switch to clothing for a more innocent and comical aesthetic. If there's any build with hidden kung fu magic, this is it. By the end of the game, the brawler will be the strongest force in the wasteland. There's nothing he can't take on. Remember, as always, there are timestamp links in the description, so if you want to skip to a certain section of this video or go back to one after finishing the video, you can. Now it's time to get into the backstory for one of our most rewarding characters yet. The brawler was born in Boston and grew up here as a single child of parents who had flown to the United States from China. His parents had obviously been born in China, but had moved to America for what they had hoped was a better life. And for the most part, they were right. The only issue they faced was racism, and their son, the brawler, copped a lot of troubles throughout his upbringing from suspicious and enraged Americans. The war going on with China was the main cause of this, and the brawler's father had to teach his son martial arts so he could defend himself. His father was a very competent fighter, and he taught the brawler all that he knew over many years. He never really said what martial art it was, it just seemed like a combination of many fighting styles that he simply called self-defense. It was a very brutal and practical fighting method, and although the moves within it were violent, the father taught the brawler that the techniques were not to be abused. This talent was only to be used to protect oneself and others, but never to attack for the purpose of entertainment or being cruel. The brawler was taught not to attack first unless he believed a person was a definite risk to him. The brawler stuck to this philosophy for his entire upbringing and will continue to for the rest of his life. As peaceful as he is though, the brawler has definitely had a lot of fighting experience, such as during high school when people would often try to pick on him. This schoolyard bullying didn't last too long as the entire school soon found out that he dominates in a fight. No one wanted to mess with him and he eventually gained the respect of the rougher crowds. As life went by and the brawler finished school, he was thought of as American as anyone else. Only by those that knew him, of course. It was now that he made one of the most naive decisions in his life, and that was joining the military. The brawler had signed up with the philosophy his father had taught him his entire childhood, that he was permitted to use his talents as a fighter to protect others. He didn't want China attacking his home and bombing his parents, so he joined up and spent a few years as a soldier. He had been heavily into the American culture throughout his life, and after spending some time with his squad, they learnt to respect him, and they definitely valued his ability to fight. Unfortunately, the brawler was given quite the reality check, and soon discovered that war was not done to protect others. War was simply pawns fighting pawns for petty resources. After leaving the military and regretting his decision, the brawler opened up his own dojo in Boston. He was able to teach his self-defense here to many Americans, and after training up many people, he finally met his future wife. A young American lady had turned up and she wanted to know how to protect herself and also simply desired to become fitter. After months of training, the two started dating, and after a year of dating, the two ended up getting married. It wasn't long before they had a child and were living a wonderful American life, until of course, the bombs began to fall and they were all rushed into Vault 111. 
So we'll be getting into the choices and role playing of this build next, but before that I will warn you that we do discuss the factions this build can join or will join. So if you don't know all the factions and don't want to then skip through this part using the timestamps in the description. We will of course keep big faction quests and the main storyline very vague. Leaving Vault 111, the brawler will be a lot calmer than one would expect. He really wants to find his son but he will still do what he can to help others along the way. For roleplaying, you're going to be overly generous, calm, and not revenge-centric at all. He's relaxed under pressure, even if he's hurt emotionally, and if he deals with people he doesn't like, he's still very passive. The brawler will side with the railroad in the main storyline because he wants to help them save synths, and also because he thinks it's really cool to be part of their organization. He loves the idea of being a hero, and as calm and collected as he is, the brawler has a tiny streak of immaturity inside of him. While he will help the Minutemen with some jobs, he finds them too bland to work with for extended periods of time. The main reason the Brawler wants to help the Railroad is because he sympathizes with synths and understands the Railroad's cause. The Brawler grew up being shamed by the society around him and he was mistreated for simply being himself, a choice he had no control over. He's an open and curious person and he's very interested in all the new things like synths and super mutants. The brawler has no harbored hate or prejudice against other people because of what they look like or who they are, and he's well aware that a closed-minded, judgmental attitude leads to more problems. Because of this, he will definitely not be fond of the Brotherhood of Steel. Also, do note that we'll be using the Ballistic Weave mod which you get from the Railroad. Our video all about getting this is in the description. Moving on to the start game special stats, the brawler will superman punch his way into the wasteland with 10 strength, 1 perception, 2 endurance, 1 charisma, 1 intelligence, 9 agility, and 4 luck. Genetically speaking, the brawler can dish out damage a lot better than he can take it. He is incredibly strong and always has been and he's also ridiculously fast. He uses coordination, speed, and brute force to exert immense power upon his opponents. He's pretty lucky to have such fantastic genes to allow all this, although some of his senses were slightly damaged by the technology in Vault 111. He's never been a talkative man, hence one charisma, but he'll still be able to make a decent amount of caps if he wants to by selling all the items in the game that he won't be using. Also, the brawler isn't very smart. He's dopey, but that won't stop him from being a hero. Overall, this starting stat spread is going to give us plenty of damage, heaps of VATS usage, and access to the Blitz perk, which is fundamental to the playstyle of this build. I also really want to stress that this build isn't easy to start with until we reach a high level of endurance, get Ballistic Weave, and most importantly get the second rank of Blitz. The second rank of Blitz is the real turning point for this build when the Brawler unlocks his true hidden ability. After leaving Vault 111, you're going to want to get the special book in Sanctuary to gain an extra special point to allocate, and you're going to want to put this into Luck so the Brawler can get the Idiot Savant perk. To further increase your special stats, you're going to want to get all these special bobbleheads, except intelligence, as soon as reasonably possible. And if you want to know where you can find all this stuff, we've got guides we made linked in the description, alongside all the other videos we've made that you may find useful for this build. The reason we don't want the intelligence bobblehead is because it makes the idiot savant perk less effective. However, if you do end up getting it, it's really not the end of the world. And now let's get into the main course of this build, all the perks we're choosing from the start of the game to level 50. We'll explain perks up to level 50 for all our Fallout 4 builds, and of course once you go beyond this, you can pick whatever you like. I think Adamantium Skeleton would be a cool choice for this build after level 50, but really there's so much stuff you could do. Anyways, let's take a look at level 2, the first time we pick a perk for this character, Idiot Savant. At rank 1, Idiot Savant gives you a random chance to receive 3 times as much XP for doing something, and the lower your intelligence is, the higher the chance there is for this to occur. According to the mathematicians of Reddit and the World Wide Web, a character with 1 intelligence and 2 ranks of Idiot Savant should level as fast as a standard character with 10 intelligence. Next up, we're investing in Iron Fist to gain 20% extra damage with our fists, and then at level 4 we're going to get the Blitz perk. This increases VAT's melee distance significantly and will allow you to basically teleport right up to your opponents to punch them, which saves you from taking the damage you'd receive if you tried to close the distance yourself. 
We're then going to be getting the first rank of Rooted to deal 25% more damage with our fists and have plus 25 damage resistance all while standing still. This conveniently stacks on top of Blitz. At the second rank, those 25s become 50, so this is without a doubt a powerful perk this build needs. Next up, we get a perk which is also crucial to this build's playstyle, and that is the Moving Target perk. This is always great for a running character like the Brawler who will often sprint around, target in vats from a long distance, use Blitz, and then sprint away to gain distance and strike again. So because of this constant in and out playstyle, it really helps to have the plus 25 damage and energy resistance while sprinting this perk will give us. We're then getting two ranks of sneak to be 30% harder to detect and not able to set off enemy floor based traps. I'd like to stress that this doesn't include mines yet. We're then going with the second rank of Iron Fist to deal 40% fisting damage and also have a chance to disarm our opponents. This works really well with Blitz against gun using enemies because their chance to shoot you is eliminated when you teleport right up to them and also then if you disarm them. Finally, at level 10 we start investing in endurance for more health and more sprinting capability. At level 11, it's time to cash in on the second rank of Idiot Savant, and basically all this does is change the chance of getting 3 times as much XP for doing something to a chance of getting 5 times as much XP. This is of course still affected by how much intelligence you have, so try to avoid that bobblehead and keep intelligence at 1. Next up, we're getting the third rank of Sneak to be 40% harder to detect and also never trigger enemy mines, and following this, it's time to start getting lucky. Two points of luck will be picked over levels 13 and 14, and then at level 15, we're getting critical with the Critical Banker perk. This will let us store an additional critical hit to use in VAT on top of the standard meter. So at the first rank, we can store two critical hits. We're then going to be getting the first and second rank of armor to improve any armor you're wearing, but more importantly, to start upgrading your clothing with Ballistic Weave. You may or may not have unlocked Ballistic Weave by now, but if you haven't, you're going to want to get it as soon as you can. At level 18, it's time for Iron Fist 3 to deal 60% more punching damage and have a chance to cripple one of our opponent's limbs. We're then going to be getting 3 more points of endurance, taking us through the levels of 19, 20 and then 21. We're now going to be able to sprint for a good amount longer and also have a really handy health boost, which as you know pays off later on a lot more. We're going to make a video about this soon, but basically the higher level you are, the better your endurance investment becomes. So it's a point of endurance at 21, but then at level 22 we're going to be getting rooted to. At this rank, you'll have plus 50 damage resistance and deal 50% more damage with melee and unarmed weapons or your fists while standing still, and this is of course sensational. Combined with Blitz, we'll be dealing 50% more damage with almost all our attacks. After this, it's time to get back to hide and seek with the sneak perk, and now we'll be 50% harder to detect, and running will no longer negatively impact our stealth. Speaking of running, our sprinting playstyle is now going to get a massive boost with the second rank of moving target, and this will give us plus 50 damage and energy resistance while sprinting. This stacks really well with Rooted, as we'll have high resistances basically all the time. We're then getting the third rank of armor to take our Ballistic Weave to the next level, and then the first rank of the Action Boy perk. We then get the second rank and now we'll regenerate action points 50% faster. This will be extremely helpful for all the sprinting we're doing and also for the constant VATS usage with Blitz. We're then investing a perk point into luck and then we're getting the second rank of Blitz. Now this build reaches its true potential and gains a massive boost damage wise. With this rank you gain another increase to VATS melee and unarmed distance and now the longer the blitz distance is the more damage you will cause. We're then going to get the second rank of critical banker to store yet another critical hit giving us 3 criticals to launch in succession if we so choose. At level 31, we're getting the 4th rank of Iron Fist to deal 80% more punching damage, and at this rank we'll have an even larger chance to cripple our opponent's limbs. We're then going to get 2 ranks of Grim Reaper's Sprint, and this is another one of those awesome luck perks that will highly benefit our VATS playstyle. After 2 ranks, any kill you cause in VATS now has a 25% chance to restore all your action points. This can put you on a massive VATS rampage with Blitz. We're then getting another great luck perk known as Four Leaf Clover, and we're actually going to be getting three ranks in a row. With three ranks of this bad boy, you'll have a very good chance of filling your critical meter with every hit you land in VATS. We're then getting two points of endurance for more health and sprinting capabilities, and then we're getting the fourth rank of armor, which means we can finally max out our Ballistic Weave. 
finally at level 40, we're getting another point of endurance, and by now, as you would assume, we've become quite a sturdy character. Next up is the solar powered perk and the first rank is going to be very useful for the brawler. We get the second rank straight after this. At the first rank you gain plus 2 strength and plus 2 endurance during the daylight hours between 6am and 6pm and this is going to make the brawler cause even more damage with his fists and have even more health to stay alive. Your action points will also of course deplete at a slower rate while sprinting. The second rank of this perk will make you slowly remove radiation which is always helpful. We're then getting Critical Banker 3 to store another critical hit to be used in VATS, and then at level 44, we're getting the third and final rank of Moving Target. Now, sprinting will cost 50% fewer action points, and combined with our high endurance and high agility, we'll now be able to sprint for a super long time. Next, we get the third rank of Rooted, and this gives you a chance of automatically disarming enemies that use a melee weapon against you while you're standing still. This also plays into the whole unexplainable monk power concept of this build, and is of course quite useful. After this, it's time to get Iron Fist 5, and this is awesome for all the Fallout fans who remember the paralyzing palm perk. Now your punching attacks will do double damage, and critical hits in VATS, which we will be scoring all the time, will paralyze your opponent. This is very helpful, and it looks a lot smoother than it used to in previous Fallout games. We're then getting the third rank of Grim Reaper's Sprint, and this gives the Brawler a 35% chance to restore all his action points with any kill he causes in VATS, and he also has a chance to completely refill his critical meter. At level 48, we get the fourth rank of Four Leaf Clover, and this will give you an excellent chance of filling your critical meter with every hit you land in VATS. As you can see, this character will be dishing out critical punches all the time, and at later levels, this is definitely necessary for the best results. Next, we get the final rank of Sneak, and with this rank, you can engage stealth mode to make distant enemies lose track of you. This is helpful for the hit and run playstyle of the Brawler, as if you launch in using Blitz and mess something up, you can sprint away, hide, your enemies won't be able to find you, and then you can come back and try again. Finally, at level 50, we're getting Solar Powered 3, and this will make you slowly regenerate health. Just like the strength and endurance bonus and the radiation removal, this is of course only during those daylight hours. We chose the last two ranks of solar powered mainly for roleplaying as they do fit in with the subtle monk magic theme this build has, but that said, the health regen and radiation removal are still helpful and convenient to have. So with all that done, the end game special stats for the brawler are going to be 11 strength, 2 perception, 10 endurance, 2 charisma, 1 intelligence, 10 agility, and 9 luck. This of course doesn't include any gear, and remember we want to avoid the intelligence bobblehead and keep the stat at 1 to get the most out of the idiot savant perk. Although if you want to get the medic perk after level 50 and get less out of idiot savant, you can. It's up to you. When it comes to the gear for the brawler, it's going to be easier to explain than any of our other Fallout 4 builds. Basically, we wanted a really humble looking aesthetic for roleplaying and also comical purposes, and to achieve this we're going to be using the Laundered Loungewear and the Newsboy Cap. Laundered Loungewear should give you a bonus of plus one to your endurance and plus one to your charisma, and the Newsboy Cap should also add a point of charisma to this build. This apparel will of course need to be fortified with Ballistic Weave, so follow the Freedom Trail and get that as soon as possible. With the highest rank of Ballistic Weave, which you will need the 4th rank of Armor for, you're going to have 110 damage resistance and 110 energy resistance on your loungewear and on your hat. This will give you insane protection and fits in with roleplaying a character that slowly develops ultimate monk-like abilities. At the start of the game, things will be a lot harder and you will most likely have to use whatever kinds of armor you can find. You don't have to wear armor to start with if you don't want to, so we'll leave it up to you. Don't let yourself struggle too much, after all the main point of playing these builds is to enjoy them. Speaking of which, we really recommend you never use any weapons during your playthrough, but if you absolutely have to, you could use spiked knuckles or another punching weapon until you get the second rank of Blitz. Try not to though. Remember that for the best effect, you're going to want to land sneak attacks, criticals, and long distance strikes as much as possible. The brawler may face many challenges, but as you can see from this video, he will eventually reach a state of unmatchable power. To help with this, Scott and I recommend collecting heaps of magazines hiding around the Commonwealth. Collect all the Grognak the Barbarian magazines for plus 50% more critical unarmed and melee damage, and also look out for those US Covert Operations manuals to be harder to detect while sneaking.
The Unstoppables magazines are also a fun choice for this build because after you get all of them, you will have a 5% chance of avoiding damage completely. When it comes to companions, you'll likely find you need to use them at the start of the game, so be sure to pick a morally sensitive character to help you out in the wasteland and fit in with the theme and actions of this build. Many companions are compatible such as Codsworth, definitely Valentine, and even Piper, which is always nice. Whoever you choose, remember to give them great weapons and ammo you don't need so that they can use it to help you. However, at some points in the game, you might want to dismiss your companions if they're going to get you discovered while sneaking. We'll leave that up to you to decide. When it comes to settlements, the brawler doesn't understand how to design them and also doesn't really care about making them himself. He thinks the HQ of his chosen faction is the most awesome place ever, but of course if you want to make settlements then you can. Just rationalize it using the concept of the idiot savant perk. And that wraps up this week's Fallout 4 build, The Brawler. I hope you enjoyed this build, and if you did, be sure to click the subscribe button so you see the one we release next week and the week after that and every week for a very long time. Be sure to follow us on social media like Snapchat, which is all detailed in the description below, and do share and like this video if you deem it worthy. It's been Michael with another Fallout 4 build, and until Scott and I see you next time, have an awesome day.